Yeah, um, I don't know yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely, um, I was just saying that uh, if I envision, like when I envision us back in the Super Bowl, I, I do, do envision it probably against them because of what they have there. Like there's a reason they're so successful. Um, you know, Patrick Holmes being, I think, going to go down as one of the best players in the NFL. And, um, you know, they do it with a really good defense and uh, they have incredible coaching. So, like, that's that's usually who the type of teams you're going to have to play in the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I mean, that's what I envision. Is there is there frustration that comes with, like, being a really good team and maybe your timing is just bad? I mean, like, you know? Yeah, I don't – It's the thing is, like, I don't feel like the timing is bad. It's like – I, like I, I kind of said it a couple of times during the years. Look, you can have the most talented roster in the NFL, which I really do think we do, and have incredible coaching, which I think we do. I really, we have all the pieces, but it never guarantees you the win. Like at the end of the day, like it's not basketball; it's not a seven-game series. Like yeah. um, you can put yourself in the absolute best position, and and sometimes um, you get beat, you know, and it and. All you can do is continue to try and put yourself in that best position, but it just you're just never guaranteed anything. So I, I don't feel like we're, we're, it's bad timing or anything like that, or that um, we didn't do enough to prepare ourselves. I think I think we have the best team that you could put together, and um, we just went against another good team and they won. And you feel that way for going into this next year? So I do. Yeah, yeah I, I feel so confident in the. In the the team that we have and knowing who, you know, who will be back here and um, also knowing that guys that do leave, I think we always do a good job of finding a way to um, replace that production or that leadership or whatever we need to do. You guys talk back in the summer about how hard it is to get the whole journey to get back to where you were. Yep. How do you, you got to see if it went step further this year. How yeah, I'm going I'm to repeat myself on this one again that, um, I, you know, last year I, I spoke about in the, after the NFC Championship, you know, snap your fingers and be back in the NFC Championship. But it's just not how it works. Um, you know that there's just, there's such a process. There's, you know, all your training, all your summer work, all that. you got to do the preseason games. you got to win games, put yourself in the position to have seating, all that kind of stuff. we got to do it again. And um, if anything, I think learning that last year um, makes me understand it better this year and also know that no matter how bad it hurts right now, um, that my body will be ready when it's time. My mind will be ready when it's time because it's just quite frankly what we do. You know, we're football players, and every you know, there's always a new season. So uh, when it's time, we'll be ready to go through all that again and uh, put ourselves. In there's position. always so much pressure on a quarterback to, to deliver a Super Bowl. How did Brock yeah. handle? Just the game and then the aftermath of it. Felt like he handled it great, man. I, I thought he played well. Um, never felt, I, honestly, I never felt nerves from him or anything like that. And, um, just seeing the little, like, few things that I've seen when he spoke to the media afterwards, you know, he, he old, always shoulders the blame because he's the quarterback and he doesn't have to because it, it wasn't his fault. Um, but, you know, he always, he's, he's a leader and he, he wants to, um, you know, be the reason and, uh, you know, we appreciate the hell out of them for that. We've Hi. seen so many teams in NFL history lose either a title game or, or a Super Bowl and then just kind of fall apart. But obviously this team has seen so much heartbreak in, yeah. in some of these games, yet it hasn't happened yet. You just alluded to it. But what is it about this this organization outside of just the, the, the sheer talent that you have that you think has, has enabled you to, to come back from these types of losses? Yeah, um, the way I look at it is, and I think – Kyle puts it in a good way. There's, I love what he always says, like, we're going to put ourselves out there. Because that's what you do, like, as a professional athlete is, like, you really are, like, you're vulnerable in putting yourself out there on the biggest stage in the world. Um, and when you come up short, it hurts. You know, you're, you're a little embarrassed, like, all that kind of stuff. But, like, we embrace that. We relish that because... Like, what's the, other, what's the alternative? Like, that's what living is. Like, is taking a chance and putting yourself out there. Um, because if you don't do that, you're never going to have an opportunity um, to really, like, experience, like, true greatness and true accomplishment. So that's just, that's just part of the gig. And I think having a, an understanding of that and um, 
just accepting that um, helps in these situations when you do come up short and being able to bounce back because you know, like, yeah, it sucks, man, but you know, what else are you gonna do? That's that. That's just how. That's how we're bred. That's how we how we work. And um, yeah. So do you think that comes back to their focus, not just on talent, but on picking up guys with with personalities that that yeah, I think, think the mantra. I think all of that is, is super important. Um, and I think it's important to try and find the positives of it. Nobody, obviously, like you don't feel any sort of positivity right now. But there's always a lesson to be learned um, in any of these losses, no matter how much they hurt. Um, and I think you can use that to fuel yourself and um, to just grow stronger from it uh, going forward. Kyle, is there a plan to get your hands dirty and learn the sewing machine this offseason? <laughs> how long the assembly line? <laughs> Listen, I'll, I, just like in football, I'll help wherever I'm needed. Um, I don't think she, I don't think she wants me in there though. I, I, my skill set is in a different uh, different field, but if she needs my help, I'll give it to her. You can at least like pack boxes or yeah, exactly. I um, I've done some very minor things. I, you know, I've, I've pulled some threads for her and stuff, but very very minor. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, kind of what it felt like. You know, I, I again, like I haven't watched anything, so I don't know if the second and third quarter weren't our prettiest forms of football. But you know, I just kind of felt like we were always just kind of playing a little bit behind the chains, and that's where we struggled at in other you know, times of the season. When you're looking, you do have a lot of playmakers on offense, but is there a part of you that's disappointed that you didn't get the ball in your hands more than you did? Um, I love catching the ball. I love helping the team. You know, I trust Kyle and you know what the plays that he's calling. You know, we have a lot of explosive guys. Um, so yeah, I mean, I love getting the football. If I don't, hey, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to affect the game in other areas. George, you, tell us what you thought of when you woke up Monday morning. What, what went through your head? Um, I was really hungry. You know, I didn't go to bed till like 6. So I was hungry. Got some food with my wife. That's about it. What did you say to her? Good morning. <laughs> but, but when you guys get back together in a few months here for an off-season program or a training camp, how do you see this team? Do, do you see it as a big-time championship contender that a, a huge amount of the core is coming back? Um, I would say so. I mean, I feel like we have a lot of guys who are still on contract. Um, Brock's on his rookie deal. Um, I think we have a lot of guys who play football at a very high level. And so, yeah, I, you know, I have Nick Bosa coming back, right? Yeah, I think, I think we can win a lot of football games. I think I think you're always hungry. That's the feeling you always want. I think when you get there, you now know what the deal is. Um, but uh, I think it, it makes you definitely makes you more hungry, and it definitely hurts worse. Considering Brock came in with this arm issue going in, how did you just? overall rate Brock's season and, and what he did from training camp to, to leading you guys to Super Bowl and playing really well there. Yeah, I think it was, what he did was historic and, and unbelievable, man. I mean, I think people forget, you know, he was a rookie quarterback that was the last pick of the draft and came in, you know, midway through the season and then uh, had to get an elbow surgery in the offseason. So his real first year of starting in the NFL, um, he didn't throw a football until training camp to, to one of us, so pretty impressive what what he managed to do and then to be the MVP of our team was you know pretty incredible lucky he's on our team Chris with your dad being on this stage so many times before was there any advice that he gave you after the game or just words that stuck out um you know my dad always gives me you know great advice and always has the the, the right things to say I mean I just appreciate that you know he's there for me I appreciate my whole family um you know I think in in times of adversity, you find out, you know, who's on your team. And I'm just so lucky that I got such a great family. And obviously my dad having experienced a lot of different things, he knows what this is like. Um, so I'm just appreciative of my support system.